Welcome back. This is Rodrigo Fondor with Asheville Real Estate News. Really excited for the episode we have today. Uh, and we're joined by Mr. Worley, who's a CPA here in town. Just as a reminder, before we get into it, a little bit of house cleaning. Check us out on iTunes, YouTube. We're hanging out on Instagram a lot. Let us know what topics are important to you. We're here to answer your questions, create a platform for your conversation, everything related to actual real estate news. And if you're on iTunes, subscribe, give us a rating. That's really important to us. It helps us out a lot. All right, well, without further ado, Mr. Worley, thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. Yeah, uh, everybody's got a different story, how they showed up in Nashville. Yeah. I got here in 2009. What's yours? I've been here all along. I was born here. One of the few, huh? Yeah. So you've seen the full change in Asheville. And... I have. I've seen it going from a thriving small southern downtown to mm -hmm. a ghost town and back to the town that it is today. So. Yeah, I don't know if you knew this, but our Forbes uh, identified Asheville as one of the top 15 destinations worldwide to visit in uh, 2018. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm active in the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, are you so? so? Uh, they're very pleased. Uh, at Stoked all the, about all that. The, all the top ten <laughs> designations that Asheville has garnered, and it's uh, it's dozens and dozens. Yeah, and it well. happened quickly, didn't yeah, it? It did. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Well, you know, talking about growth and change and everything, that's kind of what you know what today's about is. Obviously, new tax law came into effect this year. Right. And. I, you know, there's still probably a lot of questions. I'm sure that seems like every day there's probably something new y'all are learning or understanding well, we're about still, it. We're still learning right? some. Yeah. I mean, fundamental, uh, and, and of course my interest is uh, in real estate. Mm -hmm. I'm a real estate investor myself. And uh, and so there is some impact for real estate investors uh, in the new law. The new law is called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of mm -hmm. 2017. Congress always names uh, new tax <laughs> law with what they want it to be. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily what, what it really is. <laughs> but there are some good things in there. There's some bad things in there. For the average family, um, for a married couple, the standard deduction goes to 24000 That's mm -hmm. nearly double. But what they don't talk about too much is they take away the exemptions worth $4,000 a piece. So if you mm -hmm. have a family of six, they're basically even. they lose twenty four <laughs> in exemptions. They pick up twenty four in standard deductions. So yeah, uh, but for most folks, it's probably going to result in a bit of a lowering of their taxable income. Mm -hmm. And with the lower brackets, there will be uh, uh, potentially a little bit of tax savings. Okay. Well, I think everybody would be happy if they get some tax savings. It's hard to complain if that's the case. Yeah. Um, you know. So obviously, this is this show is kind of uh, revolves around real estate. And uh, well, you know, if you're if you're a homeowner, you only know. You only own one home, and I know kind of got connected with you through the Real Estate Investors Association sure. here, but talk about somebody who owns one home, or maybe they have like an additional rental or two, you know, two rentals, something uh -huh. that they don't do investing like aggressively or full-time. There's two or three uh, key things that I think investors should be aware of okay. in the new tax law. First of all, uh, a lot of investors, uh, when they're going out to pick up a property, mm -hmm. may do it through a HELOC loan. Right. Uh, effectively, the new law eliminates the interest deductibility of HELOCs, mm -hmm. Home Equity Line of Credit. However, there is a provision that remains in the law, which refer, was referred to as the interest tracing rules, that say if you do borrow, say on your primary mm -hmm. residence, in order to buy a rental house, that interest should be deductible against the rental house. You just have to make sure you're got really good solid books at that point then. Exactly. You and you need to be able to demonstrate unequivocally that the money that came out of that loan went into that rental house. Mm -hmm. uh, you may even want to go so far as to secure, uh, the to create a deed of trust uh, on the rental property for that loan just to illustrate yeah. that uh, you don't want the property sold without the HELOC being paid off. Uh, that's yeah. that's kind of key because that deduction otherwise goes away and there and that's for existing HELOCs so there mm -hmm. could be investors out there who don't necessarily have the ability to trace the uh, loan. so that's retroactive yes well it's effective in 18 okay but 17 is the last year you can deduct it on mm -hmm. an old mortgage oh, okay so if it carries into then you have to just do a little bit of work on right. that clear that uh, up okay the next area mm -hmm. that's uh that's a benefit for real estate investors is there is more liberalized expensing of capital improvements uh if you replace an hvac mm -hmm. uh vac yeah uh, uh hvac uh, it's and it's a six thousand dollar cost that's totally deductible so in the first year expense it if you have to put a new roof on totally totally a write-off hmm. 
um, when you buy a property, and one thing we recommend that our clients do, and we sit down with them and help them with this, is to break out that property into the components of the purchase price. Because you, you may buy a house on a half acre. Well, you really bought more than that. You bought landscaping, you bought driveways, you brought, brought walkways, maybe a fence in the backyard. So a lot of things that you might not necessarily intuitively those, think of, right? Yes. <laughs> all of those things are less than 20 year depreciable property if you designate and allocate a cost to them. And under the new tax law, you get to take 100% bonus depreciation, at mm -hmm. least for the first two years on that property, which means that part of your purchase becomes a total immediate deduction. Hmm. So that's a good thing. Right. Um, now, what would you say to like a homeowner who maybe doesn't have any investment properties? Is there anything that they should be aware of that's going to either affect them positively or negatively? Well, the main thing is the, the, the 24000 standard mm -hmm. deduction for a married couple or twelve for a single individual precludes a lot of people being able to itemize. They right. also eliminated uh, miscellaneous deductions as an itemized expense, which includes such things as uh, job hunting costs, mm -hmm. moving expense, tax prep fees. You cannot itemize You those. cannot deduct those anymore. Mm. Uh, investment advisory fees, uh, if you pay someone to um, uh, assist you with stocks, mm -hmm. mutual funds, etc. cetera. Uh, and on the taxes, we used to be able to write off our property taxes and all of our income tax. Right. Now that's limited to $10,000 uh, combined. So if you have $4,000 <laughs> of property taxes and your income tax right. is 12, mm -hmm. that's 16, you'll only get 10. Oof. Uh, I mentioned the HELOC goes out, but the home mortgage interest is still deductible and those are grandfathered in. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure we'll have too many small investors that have home mortgage loans of more than a million dollars, but that's yeah. an effective cap on the ability to deduct. If okay. you have a one and a half million dollar mortgage, we should be so fortunate, maybe, <laughs> uh, or not. But, depends. Um, it depends how the numbers fall, I guess. That's right. right. <laughs> depends on whether you can pay it. Um, then <clears throat> only the first million is right. deductible, and and on HELOCs, as I said, that's mm -hmm. how. So I obviously there's been a lot of different you know changes that are still coming. I'm sure it's going to take a while for them to all really flush out as far as what well, the impact is. Well, ultimately, there's a lot of things that we don't understand about the law right. because Congress typically with any new tax law leaves it leaves it up to the IRS to write regulations, mm -hmm. and those regulations uh, can come out in the next year or the next five, six, eight years. Uh, I heard a. a commentators say that we've been waiting now for 20 years on regulations on a particular code section. So really? in some cases they just don't get written. It just doesn't happen. And so wow. that's, a, that's a both a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that without guidance, it's we, open have to interpretation, more, right? we have yeah. a little bit more freedom to uh, mm -hmm. decide what we want to do. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, uh, if it is, if the regs do come out, it mm -hmm. gives us clear guidance on what will be allowed and what won't be allowed. Gotcha. So is there anything particular about this tax code that you say that you're excited about, a positive change, and maybe give me like what you're the least excited about, what you think might not be well, as ideal? There's good things for business right. in there, and that's trader business. Uh, the new law looks out for uh, real estate investors. Mm -hmm. There was a last-minute addition to the law that said real estate investors should be counted as a trader business, not necessarily an investment activity. Uh, and there's a 20% or up to a 20% deduction of your income mm -hmm. from trades or business. That also applies to real estate investors. Yeah. However, there is a formula <laughs> that's pretty complex that actually limits it. And so uh, one of them has to do with how many wages you've paid. Most real estate investors don't have wages with respect to mm -hmm. their rentals. Right. Um, but they do have um, tangible property, and part of those rules is that you get 20% or the, the lesser of 20% or 2.5% of your original cost basis on your rental <laughs> properties. Now, just to give you, that's hard to, that's hard to imagine. Yeah, it's, so let me it's, not, that, it's not napkin math per se, right? <laughs> let me put that into real terms. I looked at one of my... Um, LLCs that hold mm -hmm. several rental properties. I added up all of the purchase price of all the properties. Mm -hmm. I did ignored the depreciation that, that lowers that price and took two and a half percent of it. And that amounted for me to be about $17,000, uh, which means, and the 20% of my income mm -hmm. from that property was probably uh, around $22,000. Okay. So I get limited you, and these are 17 right. numbers. I've got to be aware of that for 18 because I could do a little bit of planning mm -hmm. to maybe improve my, my position. 
but I can only deduct 17, not the 20%, which is 22. So it does get a little complicated, and it's not something, yeah. you know, it's one of those don't try this at home. Yeah, well, if you're not a numbers guy like me, it gets very complicated. Yeah, uh, obviously, is. anybody should consult whoever they're working for with their taxes and whatnot That's as, true. as they start doing all yeah. these. Um, what's, what's the best contact information for you all here? And, uh, I mean, it's always nice, you know, obviously you're well, local my, to here my, to Asheville. I'm, so. I'm right here in Asheville, uh, Worley Woodbury. Mm -hmm. um, the website is www.cpafirm.com. Okay. Uh, my email is david at www.cpa.com. Awesome. And uh, Thank you. I do some speaking to real estate groups. We're probably going to be doing a series of small seminars mm -hmm. with maybe 15, 20 people okay. on selected dates. It, it'll be maybe a lunch and learn with a small fee to cover the lunch, and we'll get mm -hmm. people together and talk What's... about these things you know, for an hour, hour and a half or so. Yeah, and so if somebody is interested in doing the lunch and learns, what's the best way for them to find out or... So well, they can, they can email me or, <laughs> or they can email my firm administrator, okay. molly at www.cpafirm.com, okay. and Molly can give them dates and so forth. We're, we're only going to have small groups come right. in because that's more effective, but we'll do that several times mm -hmm. so that people have a chance if they have questions. Get their questions answered. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, so really, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today, and uh, yeah, good luck with tax season. Hope yes, you get some thank sleep. You. <laughs> appreciate it. Rodrigo, yeah, thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, y'all, let us know how you, what you guys thought. If you have any questions, just let us know right there below in the comments. Have a good one.